Even though I'm not required to attend summits like this anymore, old habits die hard. And when the issue at hand is the health of our planet and the world our children and our grandchildren will inherit, then you will have a hard time keeping me away. And that's why I'm here today. Because when it comes to climate, time really is running out. You heard the same message from world leaders last week. And now that they've left, here's what we can report. Meaningful progress has been made since Paris. And the agreements made here in Glasgow, thanks to so many of you, including my friend John Kerry here, who is tireless, and his team, thanks to your efforts here in Glasgow, we see the promise of further progress. That was true six years ago as well. You know, I, I know we're an oil country, and uh, we need American energy, and, and by the way, uh, American energy production. Uh, you wouldn't always know it, uh, uh, but you know, it went up every year I was president. Um, and, you know, that whole suddenly America's like the, the biggest oil producer and the biggest guy. Uh, that was me, people. I just want you to. <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> it's a little like, you know, sometimes you go to Wall Street and folks would be grumbling about anti business. And I said, have you checked where your stocks were when I came into office and where they are now? What, what are you talking? What are you complaining about? Just say thank you, please. There's a lot of good leaders. There's a lot of good leaders. There's a lot of good leaders. India comes out net zero 2070. There's nothing behind that. That's just an announcement. It pulled out the air at the last minute. But then you look at China, net zero 2060 and peaking emissions by 2026 to 2030. Just look at the emissions under that pathway. That blows 1.5 virtually out of the water. But then you come to the US, lots of grand talk, but its emissions per capita are remain incredibly high for years to come, and it's not prepared to tackle the real challenges that, that climate change throws upon us. But then you go to the UK. You unpick the rhetoric, and what you find underneath it is, is just a vacuous, empty space. And that's what we're seeing here. And until we are prepared to grasp the nettle and recognize that the climate and the temperature responds to physics, chemistry, and biology, not ephemeral economics, not short-term politics, then we are going to continue to fail. And I think unless we are going to very rapidly you know, grasp the nettle, and we will not do it with our current leaders, they are not up to the job. They are ill-equipped and unable to understand the challenges that we face. Now, they may be pushed into making some decisions appropriately, but they will not be pushed through their own understanding of the issues. The rest of us have a job to play. Leadership is a partnership between bottom up and top down. And at the moment, the top down part is failing. But that partnership is always messy, but it's absolutely key. The marchers, the youth movements, the civil society groups are a key part of leadership. I think we need to unpick this top down view of leadership and start to view it as much more a messy and difficult partnership that we always inevitably have. Am I seeing hope? Really, that hope, if, if it resides anywhere, they say it resides in. Yeah, in, in the communities that we see outside the blue zone. And really those, those, those communities and those voices need to be heard within the blue zone if we're gonna make any real success.